What's up, dudes and dudes? It's the year now. My name is Seth, and we are back here for some more Trove. Today, we're going to be doing the review of the All Pine Artist Tree Pack. It's probably like too many pun steps. Like, seriously, you do a little bit. A little bit, because otherwise that's not even cringe, that's just bad. <laughs> so anyways, how you all doing today, folks? Hope you're doing fantastic, wonderful. Hope this video makes your day even better. So this pack in itself, is it actually worth its value? We'll talk about that at the end of the video, but for the most part, you're gonna be buying the pack because you want not only the mastery, but you're gonna be wanting this mount. We're gonna talk about this mount in a little bit though, because that is pretty much the biggest thing that you end up getting out of the pack. So first of all, you're going to end up getting a, a couple different styles. There's gonna be hat styles, face styles, uh, a couple different weapon styles for each of the characters. But then you're also going to end up getting, uh, what was it, three different mounts and a hundred ice blocks. We'll talk about those in a little bit because they're actually really, really interesting uh, in the code that they end up adding to the game. Like the the ice blocks themselves suck. They're absolutely useless. But what they could do for the game is something really, really big. We'll talk about that later in the video, though. Uh, however, you do end up getting two fixtures from the pack as well. So you're going to end up getting this Christmas tree right here, which is absolutely beautiful. I want to point out, I put LED blocks on this. Otherwise, it was just glowing blocks. So for some strange reason, the fixture itself, or, or framework, I guess I should say framework, fixtures are the ones that you actually put down in the club that give you quests and stuff like that, whereas frameworks are just normal builds like this. I wish Trove would just say things in English and say that it's like a blueprint or a recipe block or something, right? So if we go over to the workbench, you can see that we've got special frameworks right here, uh, and then we're going to have the Snowfest tree, uh, which is going to be these resources, not too bad, and then the gingerbread house as well. So I've actually got that set up over in another biome but in the meantime this hat style is a part of the pack you're never going to use it ever so i don't even know why i'm showing this off to you and this is going to end up being one of the mounts which i mean who doesn't like candy canes i guess but it's really really weird that you're actually riding on one of them makes me wish that they ended up just adding a generic broomstick to the halloween event that would have been really cool right but the video effects on this thing are pretty cool albeit very messed up because if we're flying and we actually hold to the right you can see the video effects from the front of this thing are shooting off to the right like, what's going on there? It's really freaking me out, dude. Seriously, it's bothering me and scaring me at the same time. But it is a gliding mount, so that is very, very cool. Let me hop on over to the chicken area. I'm going to start using this zone, I think, if there ever ends up being more uh, frameworks added to the game. So let's just hop on up here. Uh, and this was going to end up being a members area once upon a time, but... Eh, no, not really. Uh, we got this giant gingerbread house right here. This is going to be the framework that you can end up placing down. And it's not too bad. Uh, just if you're trying to look for a very quick, very easy uh, candy house, you know. I like it. I think it's neat. Um, it only really works in the candy biome, though. And maybe in a snowy biome, but... I don't know, dude. I, it's a little bit like, uh, maybe. Uh, did I end up having, yeah, I have the ally as well. There's gonna be a couple allies out of the pack. I forgot about that. Uh, we got this little tree right here, which is totally just one of the trees that the Chloromancer's uh, Snowfest costume ends up using. But it's cool that it's an ally. I guess it's all right. I, I don't know. It's not really my favorite, honestly speaking. Uh, let's uh, swap over to the next character right here because I have everything on all of my different characters. So we've got this face style, which is just gross, like seriously. And then this weapon style, which I, I mean, I love the attention to detail that the devs do with their gun styles lately. Like even the adventurine gun style, the one that's like clue bits, it's like one block thick. This is two blocks thick. Like... Where's the imagination? Like, there's so many items that are on the mod forums right now that they could be adding to the game instead of this trash that they're making themselves. Now, I'm not trying to say that the devs make bad things. No, they've actually made some fantastic items themselves that have been added to the game. However, I question the fact that they keep on adding these items that they just didn't put any effort into, despite the fact that there's so many great mod items already, like, just out there. Like, they're, in this pack should have had, there's a reskin of the Dreadmount that makes it Snowfest themed. Uh, there's also like a Santa car. Like there's so many cool things they could have added. Ugh. Sorry folks, I ended up having a little bit of a cough attack. I guess I'm starting to get a little bit under the weather as I have been posting on my Trove, or not my Trove, my YouTube community page. 
I kind of been letting people know that I am starting to get a little bit sick, so the videos might be a bit sporadic. Anyways, I'm going to try and calm down a little bit here. Let's go to the Ice Sage. So we got this weapon style right here. This little Cubesley ally, which he's okay. Kind of mm, just reminds me of B. Yellow's little Cubesley ally. I liked his a lot better. Uh, but it's not bad. You know, it's okay. I like how he's got a little smile and he looks like he's going to hurt me. Then we've got this weird face style, which is kind of cool just because it works with the candy enemies, like the cupcake uh, cupcakes enemies, right? And then the staff itself is kind of neat. I kind of like it, except like it looks good. And then you look at it from the front and realize it's all one color with no shading or anything whatsoever, which isn't to say that you have to use shading in all of your stuff. It's just, it doesn't really look right to me. Like there's just something about it. What can I say? Right. Uh, but then we've also got the UFO mount. So let's talk about this before we continue onward. The reason why this is going to, let me make sure the biomes close. The reason why this is going to be the most useful mount in the entire game for new players right now, it's a tank turtle that does not have less movement speed than other mounts. So this mount, though disgusting, you're probably going to start seeing a lot of people farming with because it's going to be the most efficient mount to farm with if you can't afford thousands of bombs to blast your way into dungeons because now you can actually use the night subclass ability to give you that extra movement speed and you can blast holes into dungeons uh, just really, really easy without having to worry about any resources uh, like bombs and crafting them yourself or buying them or anything like that. Single-handedly makes a tank turtle absolutely useless. The devs have confirmed, however, that the tank turtle's movement speed not being affected by the night subclass ability is a bug. Time will tell whether they ever end up actually fixing that, but honestly speaking, it's already too late because now they've got this mount and it's the most useless, uh, useful, useful as far as farming is concerned. And we've also got this bow style right here. Ignore the llama. I have an adventuring coming out uh, video coming out very shortly that's going to end up showing off all the adventuring stuff. But it's a gingerbread bow. Again, it's just two blocks thick, and it's really, really gross and not really colored or anything. It's kind of weird. Then we got this disgusting staff, which again is like five colors. But hey, whatever. At least it's candy. It looks delicious. I want to eat it and put it in my nose. Then we've also got this bow style right here, which sorry, the video effects are covering covering in. But as you notice that there is only one prime green color on the entire bow, maybe it's good that I have the video effects covering it because honestly, it makes it look better because it makes it look like it's a tree on fire. And is that already it? Oh no, there's the spear styles. I always keep forgetting about that. So we've got this one, which is that gingerbread house, but as a spear for some weird reason. And it just blatantly clips into our shield because I guess who cares anymore, right? Then we've also got this Christmas tree or snow fest spear, which clips into my face because who cares about that as well, right? Like, what, what's the point? Now let's talk about the bombs. The ice bombs are really, really cool. Oh, and we also got these gun styles right here uh, and this cuphead helmet that... Merc called a cuphead, and I thought, oh, that's really, really cool. I actually like it. And it also uh, shows your character's eyes. So you can see my character has beautiful blue eyes. Dare I say, beautiful. But, 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 the ice bombs are really, really cool. They're not going to work in a club world, even if you have the biome open. They're not going to end up actually doing anything, so keep that in mind. However, if you go into a normal world, this is where they end up having a very, very cool function that I would love to see fleshed out. Because if you throw them anywhere in the world, it's going to end up essentially replacing the ground that it hits with the white snow block. Now, I don't know if that is necessarily like, can we mine it? Does it actually? Yeah, it actually converts it into ice blocks straight up. Wow. So what you could do. Oh, that's very interesting because then what you could end up doing is you just throw an ice block down and then you start harvesting it with your bombs. That would be a very, very easy, quick way of getting uh, yourself some Siberian ice, which not only could you end up profiting off selling that uh, because the resource is actually a little bit difficult to craft uh, as far as I remember anyway. I'll double check in two seconds. But... That's also a very useful resource just for building in general. Now, what I was trying to get at, though, is that this right here already shows that the code is there. The code is ready. All the devs need to do is just add an extra piece of line to say, give us paintbrushes. 
paint tools, man. Make it so that this works in a club world based on a certain rank. Maybe it's a certain permission. Uh, and I would be able to use a colored block. Like, let's just say we could convert primal gray into a throwable resource that we would end up throwing down on the ground and it would convert the whole area into prime gray blocks, right? So then not only could you end up just very easily converting one block color into another, maybe you have more gray blocks than you have blue blocks because we all know blue blocks are really tough to end up getting. But more so than that, I would want to use it just as a paint tool in general because how many times do you go out there and you're trying to end up just recoloring something in your build and you got to replace every single block one at a time rather than just being able to be like, oh, dude, I'm going to throw down a snowball and it's just going to end up doing it all for me. Now, let's just check last but not least here uh, in the organic blocks. So this is going to be the Siberian ice, which, yeah, that's one glacial shard per. That's why they're expensive. I just have a lot because I farmed the ice dragon, but... And not only that, the primal blue blocks as well. And last but not least, the biggest thing that you can end up doing with them, which, I mean, until I knew that that was Siberian ice, which is way more valuable than converting this into 100 bombs and uh, water blocks as well, which the water blocks are useful. You can definitely use that for like gardening and stuff like that. So if you're going in that route, then you would end up doing that. But I would recommend the Siberian Ice, dude. Like, I didn't know that. That means the Siberian Ice is probably going to end up dropping in value. Not that people sell it for, like, that much at all anyways. But it still is a really good resource to have just for the sake of building. I'm going to go and get to doing that. But in either case, thank you so much for watching, everybody, because that's all the time that we have for today. Do you think that the path pack is actually worth 20 American dollars, though? No, not really. Because honestly speaking, all of the items that you end up actually getting out of the pack aren't really going to be used outside of this time of year. Like, really. Maybe you'll use the cup, and unfortunately, you'll be forced to use the flying saucer, but it's really going to look awkward with the rest of, like, everybody on their cool mounts, and then you're sitting there on that stupid thing because it's efficient, not because you like it. <laughs> so, anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content. That's also going to build up loyalty points in my merch store. Links are in the description for that. And for the fans that want to go the extra mile, you can donate to me for absolutely free with Gawkbox. Links are in the description explaining that as well. However, it does not necessarily mean that it's going to be available in your country because it's not everywhere, right? So in any case, have a fantastic day, everybody. Sign or and stay epic.